Welcome back to Devlog. In this series, we are developing payroll software from scratch. And in this episode, we are getting started on the admin onboarding flow to collect all the necessary information about the business. Alright, first things first, we have to update our database schema to support all of this new information we're asking for. Specifically, the organization model must now support a description, a website, a business type, which may be corporation, partnership, or sole proprietorship. That was, that was a hard one. I got that right first time. The year the business was established, the business's CRA account number, because we're in Canada, and the work address and the mailing address. For address, I've put together a new address model which stores the country, province, city, street, and postal code. The business work and mailing addresses are both instances of this new model, as well as the employee's home address. Alright, here's the plan, very abstract. We're going to display a form on the overview page for the admin to fill in missing business details. We're going to have a header welcoming the business to Nobility Pay, very friendly, and the form is going to include all of the fields we have discussed. Alright, let's get started with our montage. Not sure how we're going to organize all these fields, but let's just get them on the page for now. Alright, not too bad, not too bad so far. For the description field, I think we can go ahead and copy this one text field we created for the salary adjustment modal. No need to reinvent the wheel, as they say. Very nice. However, I realized that the theme of these inputs assumes a brighter background like the one that the salary adjustment modal uses. Therefore, I'm going to make them darker to work with this new background color. Very nice, look at this, looks much better. Let's wrap up the remaining fields. And after surprisingly many attempts, I managed to organize the fields in a pretty nice way. Also, I don't know why I've been so stingy with this padding. Let's add some more to this entire section. Perfect. The code has been quite straightforward so far. I'm using some general state handlers that we wrote up a few episodes ago, combined with the various input components that we have created throughout the series. I ain't finna lie to you, I was expecting a lot more spaghetti code by now. But look at us, clean as a whistle. On track for a promotion. Alright, we've made some serious progress, and before we break anything, let's push up the code. So far throughout the series, our input components have simply accepted strings to display for labels and placeholders. However, this has caused a lot of mess when trying to use these components with our translation system. Therefore, I've updated all of our components to accept a translation key which is used to grab the actual message we want to display. This is so exciting dude, our codebase is about to get freshened up. As you can see, we now simply pass in the message key, dropping the need to write out the translation function countless times. <laughs> Not gonna lie though, keeping these translation files maintained is becoming a, a little tedious. We might have to find a new way to keep them updated and accurate, because I don't know how accurate ChatGPT translations are. TBH. But I digress, let's give it a test, and everything translates perfectly. Fantastic. One last thing to add to this form, a checkbox that allows the user to use the same address for both work and mail. Isn't that so magical? This checkbox disables the mailing address fields and instead uses the values from their work address counterparts. If we uncheck the field, we can use a different mailing address. Or we can check it again if we change our mind. Or uncheck it again if we change our mind yet again. The field values behave expectedly. Last but not least, we need a way to save our changes and move on to the next onboarding step. Let's add a small section to the top which has a simple next step button along with a steps legend or breadcrumb. Not sure what to call it. 
It looks good outside of full screen mode as well, and the entire page is responsive enough. I don't think we're going to support mobile view, uh, at least it's not a priority, cause I don't know man, setting up a payroll system is not a mobile activity, you know? Like get off your phone, go to your nearest computer, what do you- this is serious business- I love you, but you know, like lock in, you know? Anyways, uh... To update the organization's details, we will be using a Next.js server action. The structure of this function is similar to what we have done in previous episodes. If we're missing session, organization, or Prisma data, we throw a 401 error. We start off by trying to create or update the organization's work and mailing addresses. Next, we simply call an update on the organization model with all the data provided. The create or update address checks if an address relationship already exists. If not, it creates one using the provided data. Otherwise, if the new data differs from the existing model, it calls an update on the existing address model. We of course call the server action in the handle submit function of our form. Let's go ahead and push up these final changes before our demo. Let's go through the form and fill everything in as all the fields are required. We can see the address checkbox working beautifully. There we go, all filled in. Let's check out light mode as well before we submit our changes. EZ, there we go, the changes have been saved and we can believe it because our snack bar says so. On some real, on some real, the snack bar, I would trust my life with it. And finally, let's double check our translations, just for fun. Beautiful working perfectly. And there we have it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Devlog. We have put together an intuitive and well-organized first step of our business onboarding flow. The steps legend hints at two upcoming pages which we can breeze through now that we have some building blocks in place. I hope you enjoyed this episode and maybe learned something along the way. Please make sure to subscribe to follow along and see where this project goes. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.